Hi, welcome. I'm Nira Berry, the happiness coach and your host of Happy and Healthy, where we explore and discover all the many things to keeping you feeling happy and healthy. And don't forget to stay tuned to the end to watch my Good to Know segment, where I've always got something great to share with you. And today we're going to be learning all about enriching our lives in many ways, especially with the theater. So please welcome my guest today, Dean Fiala. And Dean is the president of Rockville Little Theater. And uh, I'm just so excited to hear about it because I, I didn't even know about it before. So, uh, so yeah, so Dean, um, you know, I know we're so blessed in the D.C. general community that we have so many um, theater outlets. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I'm so glad that we have this as well. So why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Um, well, we're Rockville Little Theater. Um, we started in 1948. Um, I was not there, obviously. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Hay Fever by uh, uh, Cole Porter was our first show, and uh, continued on from there. Um, do about three to four shows a year, um, usually straight plays. Up until 40 years ago, we did musicals. Um, hope to do another musical again soon, um, so that'll be part of our fun. Uh, unfortunately, uh, like you, many people didn't know we existed. Um, we often do uh, events in the city of Rockville, and you'd be surprised how many times uh, somebody says, I live right across the street, and I didn't know you were there. Well, well we are. Well, uh, now they do. <laughs> now they do, exactly. And most of our shows are at the uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald Theater in Rockville Civic Center. Uh, there's usually a big poster in the front that shows what show's coming up next, and hopefully our next show will be up there soon. Um, we're an all-volunteer organization. Um, ranging from high school kids up to retirees. Wow, that's, that sounds so interesting. So how did they get started, actually? Um, like, uh, I know you said it started in 1948. It, it did. But... There, there, uh, as you know, uh, Rockville was really starting to blossom in 1948 yeah. after the war. Uh, Twinbrook and Twinbrook Estates were built up, and there were a lot of people that felt the need to have some theater. So uh, who started it? Now, that's a really good question. I should have that to my tongue. I do not. It is on our website, however, under our, under our history section. Yeah. Um, but I, I know it's uh, the oldest continuing operating right. live theater that in the is, Rockville that area. That is correct, so, in, in Montgomery County, yes. Yeah. Um, wow, Montgomery so. Playhouse might argue about that, but they've taken a couple breaks and we have not. So. Yeah. Oh, so that, that's so interesting. So obviously it's grown since, uh, since it started, I would, right? I would like to say it's grown. Um, yeah. We've maintained. Um, it, back in the 50s and 60s, there were a lot more opportunities for social interaction. And the theater mm -hmm. group had lots of other things like picnics and theater outings and things like that. Just there was a lot more time for people to volunteer. Uh -huh. um, and like anything else recently, it's, it's harder and harder to find time to do the things you'd like to do. And so it is an all-volunteer all volunteer organization. All-volunteer organization, yes. Um, from our ushers to our concession people to the actors uh, to the people designing the lights, designing the sound, to running the lights, running the sound. Our directors are all-volunteer. Uh, nobody gets paid. We just do it for the love of theater. And, and you also, I'm sure, have this camaraderie of well, know, it's, working it's, together. I mean, there is really uh, something magical about being backstage just before the curtain opens um, and realizing you've put in three to four months of work at least to get this moment to happen. And the curtain goes up and the audience applauds. And it's, it's a very magical feeling. And uh, the people you've worked with for that, that time, you become really close to. Um, first play I was involved in eight years ago, I'm still in regular contact with the cast and crew of that show. Um, it just, it, it's not a little family. Now, well, you know, I love that it really offers the community an opportunity mm -hmm. to really come together and, you know, to form like a, uh, you know, a, a community mm -hmm. I mean, um, within that. It is we, community theater yeah. in, in, in every sense. Um, yeah. We build something new and bring more people in and give people a chance to explore parts of their lives that they do not have in their day jobs. Can you give me an example of like, you know, some of the people? Um, sure. Um, we'll talk about one of my board members, Eric Henry. Uh, Eric's been on the board for longer than I have been. Um, he's a, a chemist at uh, National Institutes of Health. And he loves being on the stage. He loves being backstage. He's uh, currently the master carpenter for our next show. So he's, a very, obviously he's a very handy guy. Very, <laughs> very handy guy. Um, 
We have lots of volunteers that love doing carpentry, um, retirees. So they create like the sets? We create the sets yeah. um, from pieces of lumber all the way up through painting them. Um, it's, it's a long and involved process sometimes, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, the, 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 first, the first show I was in was a flea in her ear, and Eric was the carpenter. He's also on stage for that. And part of the set was a revolving room with a bed. And we had ambitions to have that motorized that never got realized um, and ended up having to have a pulley system, which worked out great. Um, but the first version of the bed was four feet off the floor. And one of our actors had to jump onto the bed in high heels onto the bed. And oh. she could not make the four foot <laughs> jump. So we had, to, we had to rearrange this uh, just before we loaded into the theater. So it made for some fun, but Eric was able to get everything together and get the show up, and it turned beautifully most nights. When it didn't, we worked it into the script pretty well, too. Yeah. So, but <laughs> it's, it's fun. Uh, we always say in live theater, it's never the same show twice. Uh, so you should come and see it more than once. Yeah. Uh, because anything can happen, and, and it often does. So. And uh, that, that, sounds, that sounds, sounds really inviting. Uh, and so uh, as far as like some of the actors, uh, do they... Uh, is this like what their passion is? Is this like what their calling was like from a young age or some of them discovered it later on? It, it depends. Yeah. Um, some people have been doing this since they were kids. I mean, we, we've had actors on the stage when they were 14 who have continued to come out and do roles for us. Um, we've had people who have found out later in life that they really wanted to try this out and we yeah. give them that opportunity to do that. Um, it, it totally varies. Uh, we have people who've studied theater um, who are looking for something to do, and it's like, hey, community theater, I really wanted to do this show, and they'll come and do the show. We've had some very professional-grade actors. Um, we usually have a very strong cast for this reason. People just want to do a show and do something fun. Um, this gives them the opportunity. Um, and we've had other people who's like, I really want to try this, and you'd be surprised. Someone's like, oh, I didn't know I could do this. And they go out and give it a shot, and lo and behold, they have some acting chops. Yeah. So yeah. It, really, it really varies. So how, how, how do you decide? Like, who is the, the, the you know, the... Well, that's, that's an excellent <laughs> question. Um, every show starts out, obviously, once we've picked out a script and things like that, which we can go into later, we have auditions. And we usually have two nights of auditions. And usually it's the director, uh, the producer or producers of the show, stage manager. Sometimes we'll get a casting consultant who is usually a director for another show or another board member, depending on how comfortable the director is with the people. Um, and we'll have auditions for a couple nights. And after the first two nights, we will sit back and figure out who we want to bring back for callbacks. And usually for callbacks, you're just looking for how the different people mesh on the stage. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have to make choices, what different choices you have to make. Because sometimes casting an actor based, especially their family member, it's like if you go with someone tall with black hair and they're supposed to be siblings, their siblings have to look somewhat like them, or at yeah. least close enough. Now, of course, community theater, you don't always have that choice, but you like to have that under consideration. And then we have people come back for callbacks. And then we go and sit around and go, okay, what's this cast look like? And you sit down and you say, okay, what are the key roles? What are the ones we have to do first? And usually the leads, but not always. And you say, all right, if it works this way, this is our cast. And then the next day or two, you start making phone calls and say, hey, we really loved you. Could you be in the show with this part? And 90% of the time, they'll say, yes, I would love to do that. And then you go oh, on to okay. your next actor, and then so on and so okay. forth until you have the whole cast. And and how long, if some, let's say somebody you know, really wants to try acting, and how, how much of a commitment is it? Well, that's also a very good question. It depends on the role, depends on the play. Yeah. Um, for a lead, uh, someone who's in pretty much every scene, you're going to expect rehearsal three to four times a week, um, usually for at least eight weeks. Um, one of our board members, Ken Kemp, who is also an actor professionally um, and just directed one of our shows, he says we really need 40 rehearsals before you get on stage. We don't always quite get there. Um, so it's a, it's a fairly big commitment and, for a lead. And do you have a lot of people coming and trying out? It depends entirely yeah. on the show. Um, when we, and how many shows do you do? We do, we do three to four shows a year. Okay. Um, and but how many performances of each show? Each show depends on the venue. If we're doing it at the Fitzgerald Theater, it's six shows. Um, we might also have a couple student matinees thrown in, so you might mm -hmm. have seven or eight shows. 
If we're doing something at the Gaithersburg Arts Barn, we'll have at least nine shows and up to 14, depending on ticket sales. Oh, that particular, like, play? Or exactly, whatever. exactly. Okay. We did a Christmas story recently, and we did 11 performances of that because the ticket sales were so good. Yeah, so. I, I bet that, um, you know, if, uh, if, uh, if something is very popular, do you extend it? or? Well, just... we have, like I said, at the Gaithersburg Arts Forum, we have that uh, opportunity to add in extra shows on Thursdays and yeah. things like that, maybe add a second matinee on Saturday. Uh, at the Fitzgerald Theater, we don't really have that opportunity just because of the way the schedule at the Fitzgerald works. It's, it's not, yeah. we don't own our venue. Yeah. Um, so we can't say, hey, let's run it for another week. <laughs> uh, it would be great if we could. Um, yeah. We don't usually have the need for it. A couple shows when we did uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, we had some sellouts. So it would have been nice to run that for another weekend. Um, but could not do that, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, you know, actually, I want to hear about, like, all the different shows and, uh, and how you even get to... Uh, to select them all, I think that's uh, that's fascinating to me. How you know you decide on, you know, wh which shows you're going to do, mm -hmm. and um, be because every year you want to change it up again. You know, I'm yes. sure, right? Well, but it's it's funny you should mention that because I just got an email today from the head of our literary committee, Ann Carey, as uh, a former president of the board and still very active, and uh, she gave me the list of plays the literary committee has recommended to add to our preferred list for next season. Oh, that's great. So, you know, we're just going to um, just take a short break. Okay. So I want to hear more about it. Okay. So, um, so I'm Nira Berry, your host of Happy and Healthy, and uh, we're going to just take a short break, and we'll be right back, so stay tuned. I am a veteran, and my victory was finding the strength to be a champion. I am a veteran. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. America's veterans are on their most important tour, the tour of their lives. My victory was finishing my education. Mine is proving a disability is not a limitation. At DAV, we're on a mission to help veterans get the benefits they've earned. My victory is having my new battle buddy. As veterans face their challenges, DAV is there to help for victories great and small. I'm a veteran, and my victory is getting the help I needed to put my life back together. DAV offers veterans of all generations a lifetime of support. I am a veteran. My victory is being there for my family. When America's veterans win, we all win. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Hi, welcome back. I'm Nir Berry, your host of Happy and Healthy. And we're speaking with uh, Rockville Little Theater president with Dean Fiola. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And we were talking about uh, the different shows. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you do a wide variety. And so, you know, maybe you could talk a little bit about this sh the show selection. Okay. Um, as I was saying earlier, um, we have a literary committee that looks over plays that people suggested we put on or the literary committee thinks we should do. And they send us a list of things we should add to our preferred list. And up, up on our website, we have future seasons. And that's a list of shows that we think we'd like to put on. And next week, and I'm giving a time period, sorry, our board every year goes over the list from the literary committee, and we have a meeting, and we battle it out and see what gets added to the list, what gets taken off the list. Do you feel like, you know, that uh, people want to see more comedies, or do you think more, like, you know, uh, murder question. mysteries? Like, yeah. Um, if, if Trying to mix it up. We'd like to. We only do three to four shows a year, though, so we can't do a lot of crazy things. Yeah. As much as we'd like to at times. Um, so comedy is very popular. Murder mystery is very popular. Uh, dramas, if we do one that's fairly well known, we'll get a good audience for it, but our audience does not really go in for new, strange dramas. They so, really want so to the, see something they know. Okay, so more like the classics. The classics. You know, you, know, you might say chestnuts, even. Um, plays that are fairly well known that have been produced before. We have people who ask us, well, do a new show. We're like, we don't really do new shows. We do not have the marketing and publicity uh, power to get oh, a see. new show. To explain what it is. I exactly. So we need to have some sort of hook into people to know, oh, Neil Simon show. Yeah. I'll go see that. Yeah, or else maybe this is a good show to see with your family. or I Exactly. You know, oh, this. Agatha Christie show, Arsenic and Old Lace. Yeah. Something that is well known and has been popular over the years that we can say, this is something you want to come see. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, just by talking about it, I'm like, oh wow, this sounds like such a fun thing to do, like and just a really great experience. Um, and so, Dean, I just want to ask you, you're an actor yourself, right? Um, I've been on the stage a couple times, yes. Yeah, and uh, how did you get into acting? Well, I acted in high school, um, yeah. did some children's theater, uh, Winnie the Pooh show, that's Christopher Robin, and then I took... Yeah. Threw some years off, <laughs> and uh, I saw an audition at Rockville Little Theater uh, for a play called A Flea in Her Ear, mm -hmm. and I said, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to audition, and uh, I went and auditioned, and the director, Laura Andrusky, who's actually now our vice president on our board, uh, had the either courage or lack of foresight <laughs> to cast me, depending on your view. And you do other things too, right? Involved in, besides being the, the president. Yes. Um, I've produced shows. Um, I'm typically a carpenter on all of our shows. Oh, okay. Uh, I've helped out as an usher. Um, I've done concessions. Um, I've, I've done pretty much everything backstage you can do. I've run the lights and sound when we've had people um, get sick uh, for a performance. So... It sounds like it sounds like it's like a family, and you really help each other and help it, to make it work. It, it, I mean, it you know, it takes a village. It really does. Yeah. Um, so I know that the Rockville uh, Little Theater also um, does things with students. Um, with we we try to have one yeah. show every year um, that's a has a student matinee potential. Mm -hmm. um, we've done The Great Gatsby. We've done To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, we hope to do uh, Raisin in the Sun. So do you work with the schools? or? Um... Well, one of our board members, Miriam Bowden, is a middle school teacher. Um, mm -hmm. and she's in charge of the theater program at Lakeland's Middle, uh, mm -hmm. uh, middle School. Mm -hmm. And so she is very tied into what's in the curriculum and what would be a good show. So while we're going through our show selection process, we'll say, is this a good show for a matinee? Mm -hmm. um, and if it is, we'll say, yes, let's, let's do this show. Um, obviously, it has to have other factors, but that definitely does weigh in when we're putting our season together, whether or not we'll fit into the Montgomery County curriculum. Mm -hmm. And then we will give students the opportunity to come see it through the schools. We give them a very low rate. It's uh, $7 per student. Um, and then the chaperones are free. Oh, well, and that sounds like a good deal. <laughs> it is. And For two people. It, yeah. it, exactly. And it gets our, typically we've sold these out, so we'll have a full house, which our actors love. Um, we introduce children to the theater, and it's one of those things. If you see a production in the theater before you're in high school, mm -hmm. odds are good you will go to see a theater performance again. So it's one of our ways to keep our audience from shrinking, um, and it's another way to introduce children to this wonderful art form. So. Yeah, because you're really giving back to the community, because yes. you know, these students may not have been exposed to, mm -hmm. to actually live theater, and now you're cultivating that within exactly. them. Exactly. Exactly, and we have usually after each matinee performance a talk back, and the cast and crew will get on stage and we'll give a microphone out, and kids will ask questions about the performance and how, how people lovely. got interested in that. It, it's a it's a wonderful time. Um, I have to remember the uh, first time we did this was for To Kill a Mockingbird, and I was kind of worried because we have a bunch of high school, and middle school students, and they're all on their devices. Oh. But the show started; they turned them all off, and they were wrapped. Yeah. I just as soon as the curtain went up, they were just sucked in. It was a, it was the most beautiful thing. It's like you have to do this a lot more. So yeah. it worked out really well. Well, that sounds beautiful. It sounds like obviously you had some good acting in there. That <laughs> it was that was a tremendous cast. Yeah. Tremendous, tremendous cast. So do you um, when you when you select the shows? Um, uh, do you, I mean it's hard to judge. You know what's going to be sold out. Yes, it is. Know. So what has been like your most popular show that you've well, ever done? In like my in, in my history, yeah. uh, To Kill a Mockingbird was our best. Yeah. And also earlier that year we had and Agatha Christie go back for murder. Okay. Um, those did very well. Uh, Christmas Story, which we did recently, we did at the Arts Barn, sold out many performances. I can't remember exactly how many now. I was on stage for that, so I was not yeah. keeping track of things. But we sold out a lot of those shows also. So, um, is that typical? No. Would we like that to happen more often? Yes. Yeah. Um, Typically, I'm happy if we can fill half the house. That means we're breaking even, and that's great. Anything more than that is is is, is pure gravy. So, and and I I, um, I understand that you have uh, people can buy tickets like as part of like a membership, like a subscription. Yes, there's but a, they could also just walk up. Right? Just walk up. We we sell tickets at the theater. We sell them online. So they don't have to be. They a They do member. not have to be a member to come see the show. Oh no no. Yeah. Um, bring friends. Come see shows. Yeah, that, that sounds amazing. 
Um, and is, uh, is the Rockville Little Theater, are they involved in uh, other things in the community? Um, we're actually starting a couple new programs as part of our education outreach. Yeah. Um, those have not come to fruition yet, but hopefully soon yeah. to do some stuff with the local high schools and help their theater departments. Um, we typically do uh, one or two extra social activities a year. We have a sort of a gala fundraiser that involves a murder mystery or something else with some dinner theater. Uh, we do some dining out nights. Uh, sometimes we have new play readings Fun. or uh, readings from known plays for free just so you can come and actually hear a play put on by actors without the acting necessarily. But so they, they sit at like a table and they just read? Typically, is that, is that what a not reading a table, is? but usually stools yeah. or, or chairs or something like that. And oftentimes we'll just, when you're on stage, quote unquote, you'll walk up and stand in the front and then when you're off stage, you'll go back to your chair. Um, but we did Gore Vidal's Best Man a couple of years ago. Um, it was a great success. Um, very interesting coming into the next political season. Uh, definitely worth definitely worth seeing. We might actually put that one on the stage. We'll see. Yeah, and so you do mostly like straight plays, right? Like we do. you don't really do musicals. Or, we have, we or have you, not done musicals yeah. since forty years ago. Once upon a time, Rockville Little Theater and Rockville Musical Theater were just Rockville Little Theater. Um, but half the group wanted to keep doing only straight plays. The other half of the group wanted to do just musicals. So they split off and became Rockville Musical Theater. Okay. Um, but. Uh, we're actually going to try our hand at a musical uh, this next year. Um, oh. We're going to do a Spitfire Grill up at the Gaithersburg Arts Barn. Oh, great. Um, and I'm, I'm actually producing that. So. Oh. What does it take to be a producer um, like of a play? Because I know uh, it's different it, for... It, the, the, the musical oh. thing has been a learning experience already. Um, it really just takes a lot of patience. Um, basically, you just have to keep all the people moving in the right direction smooth out any difficulties with the theater venue or personalities. Um, but basically, just find, try to find a good crew, uh, a good director, and get everybody playing together nicely. Yeah. Uh, and, and our rule sort of is the drama stays on the stage. And as long as the drama stays on the stage, the show goes up just fine. Yeah. Um, so the producer job is pretty much you just take all the headaches and make them your own, make them go away for everybody else. Oh, okay. I was always wondering what the producer's actual job well, you was. You know, that's, a that's a really, everyone asks that. It's yeah. Like, basically, just anything that doesn't get done by somebody else, the producer picks up, make sure that everybody else can do their jobs, is what it yeah. comes down to. Your, your enabler is a horrible word, empower, again, some corporate babble speak, but that's basically what it comes down to. It's just like, make sure that all your designers have what they need to get props, put the set up, get the lights going. I can't do this because the theater won't let me do this. Okay, let's go talk to the theater supervisor and see what we can do. They'll be different. Um, I'm not getting along with this person. Well, let's just sit and talk about why that is. All those things. So it's a, it's a catch all. Exactly. So it sounds like it's just such a, um, a fun experience to go and to see the live theater, which is. is so local and, and, and just it so is. It's so accessible. It is. You know, yeah. I don't very, know why more people don't do it. Yeah, well, more people will, hopefully. I hope so. And yeah, so it's, it's accessible, it's, it's, it's uh, relatively inexpensive, it and it seems like you get good quality acting and a great show. So people wanted to find out more. Um, can you give us your website? Sure. Our website is rlt-online.org. Okay. That is the website. Okay, great. And if you could choose uh, any part in the world to, to act in, what, what, would, uh, what would you choose? I would really, really like to play Lady Macbeth. Oh. Well, and back in Shakespeare's day, men played all the women parts, so yeah. it's not really too much of a stretch, yeah. but that would be the part I would most like to play. And what about that? Is... Uh... I just think she's a very you. interesting character. Yeah. Um, she, she is the straw that stirs the drink in that play. Okay. Um, her husband's kind of a dupe in some ways, so it'd be much more fun to be the, the instigator. So do you guys ever do Shakespeare, just by the way? That's an excellent question. We did The Tempest a while ago. Um, unfortunately, as much as actors want to do Shakespeare, as much as directors want to direct Shakespeare, audiences really don't want to see Shakespeare. Plus, there are two wonderful professional Shakespeare companies in D.C. Yes. So it's kind of hard to uh, compete with Shakespeare Theater and Folgers Theater. 
Right. Um, we, so you do your thing. You, you know exactly. And um, and you know people come out and enjoy it. Exactly. And uh, and that's wonderful. So um, so I I thank you so much for sharing all about the Rockville Little Theater and just how how we can enrich our lives with with theater, either viewing it or or being part of it. So it's wonderful. So thank you so much, Dean. I really appreciate you being my guest today. Neera, thank you for having me. My pleasure. And so uh, I'm Neera Berry, your host of Happy and Healthy. And stay tuned for my segment coming up called What's Good to Know. So stay tuned. Sometimes there is no do-over. Some things you can't rewind. That's when an extra safety step could mean the difference between a close call and a call to 911. Simple steps save lives. Learn more at PoolSafely.gov. Hi, I'm Neera Berry, the Happiness Coach, and your host of Happy and Healthy. And as part of my series in success of winning in life and in work, and really winning altogether, I want to speak to you about how to communicate effectively. And one of the best things to know is that your body language really is part of your the way you communicate. Do you know that 93% of your communication is nonverbal? So if you really want to connect with people, whether or not you're uh, working at the bakery counter or a cashier or whether or not you're at a business meeting, you know, I'll give you a few tips and tricks of how to communicate better. And, and this can really even help you on dates or any situation. And one of the ways that you can best communicate is to really mirror somebody. And you know, you can adjust your tone and your voice and your gestures according to what they're doing. So like if they're talking in a soft way, maybe you want to tone down your voice and talk in a soft way. And if they're not gesturing a lot, so maybe you can tone down your gesturing as well, because then they'll make, they'll just, you'll make them feel more comfortable altogether. And one of the things that uh, people always forget about is making eye contact. I remember when parents used to tell their kids, like, you know, when you meet somebody new, shake hands and look the person in the eye. And when you look at the person in the eye, you actually make them feel more secure and you bond. You know, and the eyes really show a lot. So, of course, always try to have the eye contact. And of course, I can't stop and not mention uh, about laughter and smiling and how that's the ultimate part of communication. Because when you smile, you're communicating to that person that you're open to communicating with them. And one of the other things that I always see people do is crossing their arms. And so I recommend to keep your arms down by your sides. So that way you don't look like you're trying to hide something or being defensive. And so there's many, many more tips and I'll give it to you more in the future. But that's all for right now about communication and your body language. And if you want more information, feel free to contact me. I'm Nira, the happiness coach, and you can reach me at info at niraberry.com. So you've been watching Happy and Healthy. I'm Nira Berry your host and I hope you have a happy day.